Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Avinash and uh, in this video, um, uh, I'm going to discuss uh, possible EC2 interview questions. So I can say EC2 is one of the very, very important module. Without EC2 knowledge, you cannot uh, clear uh, any interview as well as certification exams. Right, so this EC2 is a place where we are going to launch servers, right? So without servers, like uh, we cannot um, design and deliver most of the applications. However, we can depend on serverless. So, but uh, most of the applications still delivering via servers only, right? So what exactly this EC2 and uh, possible uh, questions on that EC2 service as well as I'm going to talk about some scenario based things also you can expect. All right. So as you are aware, all these questions also available in uh, our GitHub. I'm going to provide that GitHub link in our uh, video description also. So you can even um, uh, go there and you can um, uh, read the document if you really want. So first, what exactly EC2 is and um, uh, how many or what are the EC2 instant types you are using in your current project? So EC2 is a place where we can run our uh, servers, where we can, within that servers, we can deploy our application and we can deliver. We can integrate these servers with backend databases, load balancers, and we can even perform auto scaling uh, for the servers also. Right, so in AWS, we don't call it as a server, we call it as an instance. Right, so the common instance types uh, in our project, uh, you can answer it as a reserved instances. So the reason reserved instances uh, comes with uh, uh, like you know good amount of discount compared to on-demand EC2 instances. On-demand EC2 instances, uh, hourly basis we need to pay, no commitment, nothing, but reserved instances, if you, um, if you are purchasing a reserved instance, AWS is going to give good amount of discount, right? So you can say reserved instances, you're using, you purchase reserved instance you're using in your current project. And also instance configuration. So you might practice uh, with the T2 micros a number of the times. So, but are we really going to use T2 micros in real projects? No, we don't use T2 micro comes with one CPU and one gigs of the RAM. So it's obviously very, very less configuration for real uh, environment traffic. So you can state like, you know, you're using M category, M5 or M6 categories or C categories. So M categories, uh, uh, general purpose category or memory optimized and C categories like uh, compute optimized. So um, you can take a minute and uh, AWS EC2 instance uh, types and uh, you can see here there are a lot of instant types and it purpose available in AWS documentation. You can see this is M. So you can say M6i, M6g, this G is Graviton processors. So recent times I've seen many organizations are migrating their workloads to this Graviton. So you can say you're using M6g that comes under general purpose. It gives stable performance. And another category, compute optimized. So this uh, uh, C6g or um, C7g is another recent category. So you can mention something like, okay, we are using a primarily C7G extra large that comes with four CPU and eight gigs of the RAM. Or you can mention C7G two extra large, eight gigs and 16 gigs of the RAM. Now you can expect a question, how you are going to upgrade an existing EC2 instance? So let's assume you already have C7G medium and uh, how you are going to monitor and how you are going to decide whether that configuration is very low and in which scenario you are going to upgrade and what is the process to upgrade the EC2 instance. So for all these questions, first, whatever instance we are going to launch and we are going to run in our AWS environment, we are going to monitor the workload of the EC2 instance. CloudWatch will help us to uh, monitor the resources. We have basic monitoring, detail monitoring. With the production server and all, yeah, we can break down that monitoring interval to one minute. The granularity we can reduce to one minute. And that CloudWatch will give uh, all the graphs about our EC2 instance. So I'll try to quickly launch one and I'll uh, show you IT demo. 
right so choose an existing key pair and expand advanced details and uh, here we have an option called detail monitoring if you want to uh, go with the um, one minute interval you can enable this option so let me choose a different ami where i am delivering a web page right so launch instance that's it now once instance is uh, up and running we have an option here for monitoring right you can see here so cpu utilization memory utili uh, memory utilization is uh, one drawback uh, we cannot monitor memory utilization with the help of cloudwatch metrics network you can monitor status checks you can monitor disk cpu credit uh, everything you can monitor here so we can monitor this ec2 instance uh, metrics and we can decide okay if utilization is uh, always high so obviously it's recommend to go with the vertical scaling vertical scaling means adding more resources to same ec2 instance so then from the selected configuration you can go with the higher configuration now next question can we do this upgradation when instance is in running state the answer is no you must stop your ec2 instance to perform upgradation or downgradation when the instance is in running state we cannot perform uh, like you know vertical scaling right that's an important thing also um, along with that vertical scaling we have another scaling option called horizontal scaling you can distribute your application across multiple ec2 instances you can add both on top of a load balancer and you can deliver that application so that actually uh, we call it as a horizontal scaling so two instances three four five n number of the ec2 instances is going to deliver your application in horizontal scaling but vertical scaling from this configuration to this configuration you are going to upgrade so that is another question you can expect and one more question you can expect in your interview that you have an ec2 instance and uh, you are not able to get connected to that ec2 instance so how you are going to troubleshoot what are all the things you are going to verify so for this question you need to think in different ways first whether the required port is open in security group or not second in your vpc contain any network acls and there any restrictions applied or not third what is the instance status whether this instance is up and running or not fourth do we have any problem at os level underlying hardware level the status checks uh, whether instance status check is passing and system check is passing or not this is system status check means underlying hardware level issues instance status check means os level issues if it is a os level issue we can go to actions images and uh, monitoring and troubleshoot get system log it will show you all the logs related to this ec2 instance whether everything is fine or any issues we can verify here boot level logs and if it is something like a boot level logs or os level logs or root volume logs then you can go to storage and if you have most recent snapshot of the dbs volume you can select this replace root volume and you can replace from snapshot or you can replace from image you select that image delete replace root volume if you don't want that um, replaced one then create replacement task automatically the boot volume the root volume issues will be fixed on top of that you can verify whether appropriate service is running or not inside this ec2 instance for example somehow we stopped ssh service okay ssh service is unresponsive so obviously we cannot ssh into this ec2 instance so for that how we can verify we can use some tools like a telnet so you can use tools like a telnet on what port number you can use and um, what port number you want to test whenever you're testing if it is connecting that means yeah connectivity is there the required port the service is running inside the dc2 instance so you can verify telnet even if you don't have access to console you want to verify whether the instance is in running state or not so you can um, use this ping command but see here it's not giving any response so the reason is uh, if you want to ping any ec2 instance at your uh, security group level you need to open icmp traffic here so icmp echo request 
where is this customize emp i'm going to select uh, echo request to anywhere and also i'm going to open um, customize emp echo reply anywhere save rules so with this now this ec2 instance is pinging so we can open icmp traffic so even you can expect this also as a question you have an ec2 instance up and running but uh, if you're you're able to connect but if you're trying to ping you're not able to ping what might be the reason so the appropriate traffic the port numbers must be open so to ping we need to open icmp traffic at our instance security group so that another question you can expect so the the possible scenarios like uh, security groups, network ACLs, status checks, instance state, boot volume issues or underlying hardware issues, right? And the service status inside the DC2 instance. So these all are the areas you need to verify if you're not able to get connected to your EC2 instance. And um, so the next question you can expect is like you know um, how to add a volume to your ec2 instance and what is the process to uh, make it available and all so first for our ec2 instances we have a storage option called uh, ebs so ebs stands for elastic block storage so here we can create a volume and the important thing is your volume and your instance should be in same availability zone if my instance is in 1b if i'm creating a volume that also should be in 1b only and we have different volume types so general purpose ssd gp2 and gp3 is for regular workloads and provision iops like io1 and io2 it's for um, it's for like you know th these io1 and io2 give uh, highest performance so if your application is io intensive application running inside your ec2 instance you need a specific number of iops per second so then you can go and choose this io1 and io2 this cold sdd and throughput uh, sdd these two are the hdd devices so far this gp2 gp3 io1 and io2 these all are ssds but this cold sdd and throughput optimized sdd uh, both are sdds hard disk drives so among these two throughput optimized will give more throughput 500 mb per second right this cold sdd same mechanism but uh, with less cost and uh, uh, if you want to run any sequen uh, big data kind of workload or data warehousing uh, solutions it's recommended to go with the throughput optimized sdd and with same scenario less cost you can go with the cold sdd then we have uh, magnetic this is cheapest solution cheapest storage option we have and for less frequently accessed data we can so now when coming to the process first you create an aws and you attach to your ec2 instance then log into your ec2 instance verify the volume name by giving lsblk command so once you gave lsblk command then you can like you know uh, get the volume name then you verify whether you have any file system inside that volume or not then you write a file system once you've written the file system then you mount it to a local directory first create a directory with the mkdir command then you mount it once the mount operation completed so then you make it as a permanent mount by writing that entry in etc fstab file again if you don't know what to write go to a mtab file and get the latest information there latest entry information there and write that entry to etc uh, fstab file so then that mount will become permanent mount and questions like you know uh, can we attach one volume to multiple ec2 instances so the answer is no even through aws uh, introduced multi attach option aws even introduced enable multi attach okay so but the thing is this we really don't use much in real environments instead of this multi attach we can use services like a efs so EFS, you can even mount it to thousands of EC2 instances also. So, of course, we can, but don't talk much about this. That's my personal opinion. So you can say, if we want to mount something to multiple instances, you want to deliver something to multiple instances, you're depending on EFS, not on this instance uh, multi-attach option. And we have a lot of limitations. Some in specific instance categories only, we need to uh, choose uh, uh, like, you know, uh specific um uh nitro instances nitro uh, hypervisor instances only 
So such type of order limitations are there. And then next question you can expect on. So what is your EC2 instance backup strategy? How you are taking backup? Are you automating that? If like, you know, if you are automating, how you are automating that? What is the process of that automation? Which tool you are using? So you can expect such type of questions. So for all those questions, the answer is yes, we can take backup of our EC2 instances with the help of snapshots. So snapshots are point in time copies of our EBS volumes. So that means if you are creating a snapshot now at 7.30, at 7.30, what are all the data we have inside that volume? Those all data will be backed up. Okay, if, you're, if you want, you can create a volume from the snapshot. If you want, you can create 100 volumes also from one single snapshot. And to automate this process, obviously manually creating a snapshot is a big thing. We can automate this snapshot creation process. To automate, we can depend on a service called DLM, Data Lifecycle Manager. You can create a DLM rule and you can filter the resources, the volumes with the help of tags. Whenever you are creating this, um, it will ask us you want to filter with volumes or instances and how you want to filter. We need to define the name of the resources, whatever the instances contain this specific tag. So then, then next step, we need to configure schedule. How frequently you are, you want to take a backup daily, weekly, monthly. So you mentioned for production environment, you are creating a backup for every 24 hours and uh, the retention period is configured for five days. So last five days snapshots you are going to retain if any snapshot age is more than five days it is going to delete automatically okay so now if you get this question ec2 instance backup strategy you mentioned you are using dlm service to automate the backup process you are using uh, tags to filter the resources so then you are using uh, um, this schedules so for a production environment, you are going to take a backup for every uh, 12 hours or every 18 hours or every day at a specific time, like a 3 a.m. EST, something like that. So you mentioned you're, um, you're going to retain the backup copies for five days if it is a production environment. If it is any non-production environment like a UAT, right, or uh, SIT. So then you mentioned you are going to retain those backups for three days. Okay, so you should answer all this. So just simply, yeah, snapshot doesn't uh, like, you know, satisfies the interviewer. So mention all these points. So on top of this, um, we have an option called golden AMI. Golden AMI is nothing but uh, custom AMI. So sometime back, whatever the instance I have launched, I launched with this golden AMI only. So uh, you manually no need to connect, no need to install uh, things. With whatever already prepared here, this is a customization already performed before creating this AMI. Those all settings automatically we will get here uh, in this EC2 instance. Right, so that is a golden AMI concept. And another thing you can expect is whatever the instance you have, if you are performing stop and start, this public IP address will change. Can we have a fixed public IP address for your EC2 instance? So the answer is yes. If you want to have a fixed public IP address, you need to create an elastic IP address. Then you can attach that elastic IP address to your EC2 instance. N number of the times you can perform stop and stop and that elastic IP address will uh, associate to our EC2 instance only. And uh, can we attach multiple network interface cards? So the answer is yes, we can even attach multiple network interface cards also for our uh, EC2 instances. So the thing is, where your EC2 instance is running, if it is running in 1B, your interface also should be created in 1B only. And based on the instant type, we have some limitations. And uh, the next, you can expect some questions on this load balancers, the primary leap, uh, which load balancer you are using and what is the difference between these load balancers? So whenever um, you're creating a load balancer, we have multiple, one is application load balancer, second one is network load balancer, then gateway load balancer. This is works with Geneve, uh, some um, third party virtual private appliances that we can get from marketplace. I'm not going to talk much about this. So, but to deliver your application, so we can depend on these two load balancers, application load balancer and network load balancer. 
Application load balancer is a layer 7 load balancer. Network load balancer is a layer 4 load balancer. And this application load balancer supports uh, HTTP protocol, HTTPS protocol, and network load balancer supports TCP, UDP, TLS protocols. We have an option to allocate a static IP address or dedicated IP address for this application. Um, we, we don't have an option to allocate for this application load balancer, but for network load balancer, yes, we have an option to allocate a dedicated uh, or fixed IP address. Uh, for this network load balancer, you can create uh, elastic IPs and you can attach. Right, and primary difference is supported protocols and algorithms. Application load balancer works with uh, algorithms like uh, nested round robin algorithm and uh, least outstanding request algorithm. In nested round robin, first request will go to first, second request will go to second resource. But in least outstanding request algorithm, based on the instance load, you have two instances added to the load balancer one instance with very high utilization and another instance with very low usage maybe because of like you know configuration change or the first instance may be part of uh, different um, uh, services it may deliver in different services but second one is delivering only one service because of all these reasons so your instance one uh, usage is very very high instance two usage is very very low so sending 50% traffic to instance 1 and 50% traffic to instance 2, uh, it's uh, not fair, right? So we can use this least outstanding request mechanism, AWS uh, application load balancer automatically balance the load. Based on existing load, it will route the traffic. So that is uh, application load balancer algorithms. And when coming to network load balancer algorithm, so it works with flow hash algorithm. And whenever you are creating a target group, it will ask us, it will ask us what is the target type. Your target type is instance or IP address. So if your target type uh, uh, is instance, you can add only AWS EC2 instance only. If your target type is IP address, you can even add some instances from your on-premise also. You might have some servers in your local environment, right? Local data centers. So you even have an option to add that instances also. But important thing is you should have communication between AWS and on-premise by using VPN connectivity or direct connectivity. Somehow you should have connectivity. So this is the advantage with this IP address. We can even add Lambda functions, one single Lambda function, and you can even use application load balancer. So in which scenario we use this application load balancer? If you are looking for a fixed IP address for your application load balancer, then you can create this application load balancer as a target group and you add to network load balancer. So automatically we are going to get a fixed IP address for our uh, application load balancer. Right, so the select the type and the protocol. If you are selecting TCP, you can use with only, you can use with only network load balancer. If you are selecting HTTP, you can use with application load balancer only. If you are selecting HTTPS, again with application load balancer only. So this protocol is matter and if your application is running on port number 80 so then you need to define that here if your application instance level if your application is running on 8080 you can define that here so once target group creation completed so then you need to create a uh, listener on your load balancer so can we map uh, ssl certificate to this load balancer the answer is yes whenever you are creating a load balancer whenever you are selecting http yes here automatically it is asking us to apply a ACM certificate, certificate, SSL certificate. So we can use ACM service, we can create a SSL certificate and we can use an SSL certificate here. So that like, you know, we can map our domain name and uh, automatically traffic redirect uh, uh, to this uh, domain name with the help of uh, root 53 and all. So then another question you can expect on this auto scaling group. So basically auto scaling group help us to scale the resources automatically. And um, you, you, you define like uh, the minimum capacity required, maximum capacity required. And uh, when you want to go with minimum, when you want to go with the maximum, right? You define all the settings in this um, uh, EC2 auto scaling group configuration. So based on the load on our EC2 instances, it is going to scale automatically. You see here minimum size, 
maximum size minimum as per this diagram minimum is 1 maximum is 4 and desired capacity is 2 and when you want to run with minimum when you want to run with maximum you can define that here so if load is very high you can uh, automatically add some more instances so even while adding the resources we have multiple options like uh, how you want to uh, uh, scale the resources like uh, you want to go with the target tracking scaling policy where aws is going to uh, manage average utilization resource utilization and it is going to scale automatically between minimum to maximum that is uh, target tracking scaling policy step scaling policy step by step when load is uh, uh, 50 percentage you want to run with two instances when load is uh, 60 percentage you want to run with three instances when load is 70 percentage you want to run with four instances so you can configure step, uh, such type of step by step uh, process for this uh, ec2 auto scaling in uh, step scaling policy simple scale, scaling policy so you can create an alarm based on that um, cp utilization or any other metric you configured in that alarm so automatically you can adjust the desired count the desired capacity value in this ec2 auto scaling right and important thing is we should create a launch template in this uh, auto scaling and if any uh, scale in option triggered aws is going to remove some of the ec2 instances from that auto scaling so which instance it is going to terminate there is a uh, flow for that ASG termination policy. ASG termination policy you can refer uh, so this diagram you can refer this diagram which instance AWS is going to pick which instance is going to AWS terminate right we have some options here it follows that scenario and it is going to pick an instance and it is going to terminate and um, uh, security groups obviously security groups act as a firewall at instance level and whatever the traffic you want to allow you need to open that at uh, inbound rule security group um, right uh, its security groups are uh, stateful so that means whatever the security group you are creating you need to open traffic in inbound rules only the traffic automatically allowed in outbound rules so outbound is nothing but uh, traffic coming into our ec2 instance so defaultly it accepts all the traffic so, but uh, inbound rules whatever you want to deliver from your ec2 instance that you can configure in inbound rules so if any service is not delivered not able to connect always you start troubleshooting from security groups only and on top of these options we have some services like uh, uh, systems manager and some options like uh, uh, this placement groups so placement groups actually help us to place our ec2 instances in aws data center right so how instances are placed in aws data center so for that we can use this so we have multiple placement groups like a cluster placement group a partition placement group and a spread placement group in cluster placement group all instances runs in in single cluster in partition placement group we need to create partitions and instances we need to launch within the partition and spread placement group we can launch every instance so this uh, like you know every um, here in cluster placement group all resources will use will will get uh, will use same um, uh, network connectivity and power connectivity if any issues all those resources will get affect partition placement group all partition will use same network um, connectivity and same um, uh, power connectivity and in spread placement group all resource spread across and every resource will have its own uh, or it won't share that power connectivity network connectivity with any other uh, resources so this help us to like you know uh, place our ec2 instances uh, across the different uh, server racks network racks inside aws data center so that is a placement group group option and we have one more option uh, to manage these ec2 instances we have an option called ssm again um, if you want to enable connectivity between ssm service and this ec2 instance so you need to create a role iam role and you need to associate that iam role to an ec2 instance so now so without storing access key id and secret access key inside this ec2 instance can we access uh, any other aws resources the answer is yes so for that create an iam role and attach an iam role so can we attach an iam role to an existing ec2 instance the answer is yes 
So for that, select the instance, go to actions, security, modify AM role. So go and choose whatever role you want to associate. So you can use that option to associate uh, an IAM role. And that role will generate temporary credentials with the help of uh, STS service. It allow access of uh, another services like IS3 or IAM, any other service. So role also contain a policy based on the policy only. We will get uh, uh, service access uh, inside this EC2 instance. And um, the systems manager, you create a role and for that role, you give systems manager permissions and you attach that systems manager role to this EC2 instance so that you can manage all the instances here from systems manager. And uh, you can use the systems manager to take uh, sessions, like uh, you can connect to these EC2 instances without um, Bastion host, even if it is in private subnet also, you can get connected to it. And also you no need to open required ports and inbound rules if uh, you're depending on the systems manager, session manager. And without getting connected to an EC2 instance, without logging inside that EC2 instance, if you want to execute some commands, you can use this run command. So you can go here, what exactly you want to do, you can do that here. And also, if you have a Windows EC2 instance, if you forgot the password, you already set up custom password for administrator user, and you somehow you forgot that custom password. Now, you need to log into that uh, specific EC2 instance. So how you can recover the EC2 instance? If it is a Windows, so you can use uh, this rescue, uh, AWS support uh, run EC2 rescue for Windows tool. So this tool help us to, um, this tool help us to recover the password. Whenever you are running this command, so then it will ask us, okay, what is the uh, command you want to, you want to reset the access, you want to collect all the logs, or you have a lot of issues, boot level issues, operating system level issues, right? Uh, so you can uh, take this volume attached to one of the EC2 instance so that we can call it as an offline uh, root volume. Then when you select this fix all, it is going to fix all the issues. So whatever the reset access you select, the password is going to store in parameter store. So. In systems manager, we even have an option called parameter store. Uh, here, we can create parameters, we can store our uh, passwords, database passwords, or any custom URLs, and you can pass these parameters to the application you are running. Uh, uh, inside, like, you know, a Lambda function or a step function, you can uh, pass these parameters so that we know need to hard code these uh, credentials inside that um, uh, Lambda or or the programmatic things right so then we have some options like um, um patch manager we can configure patch baselines we can configure um, uh, state main uh, we can configure um, maintenance window so that we can perform maintenance activities uh, within this ec2 instance so the important thing is so systems manager can communicate to our ec2 instances uh, when these EC2 instances have appropriate uh, role, then only it works. Otherwise, it won't. Right? So, um, again, I have a document. This document, uh, again, contains a lot of questions. Let me quickly go through that difference between instance and AMI. So, instance is uh, a running instance, a running server. AMI is a custom operating system. This is an operating system. So how do you launch? We have multiple options. You can launch through console, CLI, and SDK, or AWS CLI, like a run instances command you can, and um, how to perform stop and start. What is the difference between stop and terminate? Stop, we can start the instance, and uh, you're not going to lose any data. Terminate means you're going to permanently delete the DC2 instance. So um, can you attach a role to an existing instance? The answer is yes. How to resize the instance by performing stop and start. But, but stop the instance, perform the resize and restart. Elastic IP fixed IP address. What is the security group? It's a firewall at instance level. Security group uh, and network ACL security groups are, uh, security groups works at instance level and network ACL works at uh, uh, subnet level. Security groups are uh, stateless, stateful network ACLs are stateless. So in security group, you need to take care about uh, inbound rule only, but in network ACL, you need to take care about inbound rule as well as outbound rule. So can you associate multiple security groups with single instance? The answer is yes. One security group you can use for multiple instances. Also, one instance can contain multiple security groups. 
So what are inbound and outbound rules? Uh, we discuss secondary group evaluation, most specific rule match. If no rule is uh, added, so then traffic won't allow. We need to uh, add to which network you want to allow to where you want to allow. So EBS elastic block storage is a block level storage and the difference between EBS and instant store EBS widely used one instant store so whatever data we store in instant store if something happened to underlying hardware we are going to lose our data and if you are using instant store we cannot perform uh, stop and start uh, ec2 instance and this instant store also called as a ephemeral storages that means a temporary so we we, we don't have uh, any guarantee for our data and how can you increase we discussed can we attach multiple yes uh, difference between gp2 and gp3 general for general purpose for most of the workload stable workloads we can go with the general purpose and uh, high performance uh, then we can go with the provision so dlm we discussed snapshots we discussed load balancers explain the type of load balancers and what is the purpose of a target group so target group is nothing but a combination of instances and the auto scaling group what is auto scaling group and how you can create a role and how you can attach role what are the advantages of role and elastic beanstack yeah i forgot to talk about this so beanstack comes under um, platform as a service where uh, we can concentrate only on writing the code you write the code you zip that code you upload that to aws uh, elastic beanstack and automatically delivers where aws is going to take care about the entire platform and placement groups, how AWS is uh, launching our EC2 instances and what is the difference, what are the different types of options we have and what is the systems manager run command, how we can use run command um, and uh, parameter store, how we can use parameter store, all those scenarios I mentioned here and uh, session manager, how we can use session manager to get connected to EC2 instances, what is the advantages and what is the traditional options and uh, what is the advantage of this session manager option everything i have explained here so these all i already uh, uploaded to our um, github so yeah you can refer that here even the previous videos like a ec2 and s3 also i uploaded here so also um, uh, i have uh, plans to make a um, video on uh, uh, vpc as well as databases and some other monitoring right so if you think this video is very helpful and um, informative, so please spare some time and subscribe to this YouTube channel and please share with your friends. And also, if you think I'm, I'm talking very fast, you have an option in YouTube to slow down this so that you can adjust uh, the speed. All right, that's it for uh, this video. See you again in the next video with uh, another service. Keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.